Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. In this video I am going to show you some tasty new expressions that have turned up in Power Automate recently that I haven't seen documented elsewhere. So let's just get straight into it. I have got an array here of names and one of the new um, expressions enables us to sort these arrays so much easier than we could before. So if I sort the outputs of that compose and then run this flow, let's see what happens. There we go, we've got a nice sorted array. But we can also sort collections. So we've got our sorted array there. I am going to create a um, collection from that. So I'm going to create first. Get the first name and get the last name. Now we can update this compose here. So we'll do sort the output of the select and we will sort on last. And there we have it. We came in with an unsorted array as a result of our select. So I was first, Paul Morana, then Tom Reha, and then in this nice sorted output, Damien Bird is first, and then so on and so forth. It's sorted by the surname Laura Webb being last. So um, obviously if you wanted to sort by the first name or any other object, you could. What you can also do is, if I now do another compose, we can also do reverse and provide it with an output. Reverse, you cannot specify um, a property. It just reverses the order of the array. So now Laura Webb will be first and Damien Bird will be last. But obviously by combining reverse with the sort, which we could do here just to demonstrate it. You can control the order however you like. So now Laura Webb is last. In our reverse of the reversed, Damien Bird is first. So that's dead useful. Next, we come up to another interesting one. I'm just going to remove this reverse off here. So we've got our sorted array here. Let's see how many we had. Okay, so we've got 14 in there. So what we could do is do an expression and we can do chunk the dynamic content of the select and we'll say seven. And this will split an array into groups and it'll give you an array of arrays based on the number that you specify. So I've said seven, so I'll get one array of seven people and another array of seven people. Let's just take that out of there and view it in notepad. There's our first array, there's our second array, and if we wanted to split it further, we could do that. Just change that around to a two, for example. Now this would be really useful for, um, I've done this manually before, and it's really useful for parallel branches, speeding up flows, um, that sort of thing. And here you can see now I've got groups of two, Paul and Tom, Damien and Laura, John and Daniel, and so on. Um, the next ones are still useful, but a little bit less interesting. I mean, that sort functionality has been needed for a long, long time. And so now we have got really simple one is int. 
um, and you supply that with a string. So if I put a pool there, that will return false. And I'll do another one. Is int, and we'll put one, two, three, four. And while we're here, we might as well have a look at the next one. Is float. And then we can say 12, and we'll do another one. Is float. One, two, three, point four, five. And then we just do is float one more time. So let's test that stuff. Run it again. So we've got false, true, 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 and false. So they could be quite useful within um, select actions or anywhere else you need to test those things in line. Um, and that's that's the new um, expressions that I spotted. Chunk is dead useful, but the most useful that's new here is this sorting functionality, which has been missing um, forever. I actually did a few blog posts and videos on that, and um, they were all quite complicated solutions to what is a simple operation. So it's really useful that Microsoft have added in this functionality and uh, it will save a lot of time and make flows simpler and easier to create. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye-bye.